Today, I'm going to show you how to crochet a slip stitch ribbed cuff and how to work along the edge so that you can start bottom up sleeves, hats, sweaters, or anything else. This video is part of a series for my new paid pattern, The Better Sweater. If you'd like to follow along with the pattern, I'll have links to where you can purchase it down below. But this video will be packed full of crochet know-how whether you purchase this exact pattern or you want to venture out on your own. So enjoy! First of all, let's talk about the stitch pattern. The ribbing is created by working into the back loop of the stitch. And regardless of which stitch you choose, working into the back loop every row will create this ribbing pattern. As you can see, the most knit look effect comes from this guy. Slip stitches into the back loops only. And that looks a little something like this. You'll make a slip knot. And chain the length that is how wide you want your cuff to be. You'll skip the first chain. Insert your hook into the next chain. Pull up a loop, and pull that loop through the loop on your hook to slip stitch. Insert your hook into the next chain, and work a slip stitch. Continue slip stitching in every chain of your foundation chain, and your challenge here is to make sure your stitches aren't too tight. It's very easy to slip stitch more tightly than you normally crochet, and it'll make the rest of the rows easier if you make sure that you keep it on the looser side. To start the next row, chain one and turn your work. Now you gotta find the back loops of your stitches. The slip stitches will lie kind of on the back side of your work here. So tilt your piece towards you to find your two loops and work slip stitches into the back loops. And you can continue slip stitching into each back loop of your piece as long as the circumference that you're going for. When it comes time to seam the edges together, so that you can start crocheting in the round, you'll look for the side where the foundation chain is curling up. And you'll want that side with the foundation chain curling up to be on the outside while seaming. To start my slip stitch seam, I'm going to insert my hook into that first foundation chain and pull through the last live loop. And for my stitch counts to match up, I also have to work a slip stitch into the back loop of that last stitch. To fasten on. And now I can slip stitch seam one for one my foundation chain edge and the back loops of my last row together. When you seam up the edges, you can chain one and fasten off. The thicker seam will be the inside of your work, and you can turn it right side in. Doesn't this make such a beautiful and stretchy piece? Imagine all the things you can do with this. So to start working along the edge, I'm going to fasten on a new color. And you can insert your hook into any old edge loop. There's no right spot to work into. I'm not counting this first little dude as a stitch. I'm going to work my first stitch right into where I fastened on. And there's my first stitch. And I'm going to work a second stitch into the same spot, because I'm working two stitches on either side of each rib, and those proportions will give us this big bell sleeve. For reference, the body was made by putting about one stitch on either side of each rib, and two stitches before every fourth rib. It still has a slouchy fit, but much more subtle. So I'm going to continue working along the edge of my cuff, and like I mentioned, there's no right spot to place your hook. Just find a loop on that edge, and work your stitch right in there. Then when you get your stitches all the way around, you can slip stitch into that first stitch. And continue working in the round how you normally would. But this is the better sweater after all, so we don't have a seam from joining rounds because we are going to work in a spiral. And to start doing that, I'm going to chain one and grab a stitch marker, marking this as the first stitch of my new spiral rounds. Then I'll chain one, skip this next stitch from the previous round, and make one single crochet in the next stitch. 
chain one, skip one, one single crochet in the next stitch. And this is the setup round for the beautiful knit look linen stitch that this whole sweater is worked in. When you work your last chain one, you'll see your last skip one and be back at your marked stitch. To keep the spiral going, you'll work one single crochet into that first chain space and that single crochet will become the new first stitch of the round. And the stitch pattern is worked, one single crochet in each chain space from the previous round, followed by a chain one. So you'll always start a round with a single crochet and end a round with a chain one, moving your marker up as you go. For those of you working this pattern, I'll show you just what that looks like. And when you come to your final round and work your last chain one, you might wonder what we do about this jog we have here from working in a spiral. Well, to level off your spiral, all you have to do is slip stitch into the next chain space. And you're done. You can fasten off. And while I've got you guys here, this is the perfect spot to show you how to place the underarm markers for the next part of the pattern. In the next video, I'll show you how to join the sleeves to the body of the sweater, but to do that, we need to mark off some stitches. And the pattern tells you to start counting single crochets from this marked stitch. Count one, two, three, and place a marker in the space next to the third single crochet. Your numbers might be different depending on the size you're working. For the next marker, we gotta go up to the last single crochet of the round, which is this guy, and again count one, two, three and place a marker in the chain space after that third stitch. And those are your skipped underarm stitches. And if that doesn't make any sense, it'll all become clear in the next video. You can also remove this middle guy right here now. Lastly, I'll show you how to add the underarm markers to the body of the sweater, just so we can keep all the marker adding info in one video. So there's the marker from the first stitch of the round, and we worked a little half round, cause that's what the pattern says to do. So you'll pick up your piece and look to the row right below where you left off. And count one, two, three, four, five, six single crochets and place a marker in the chain space next to that sixth single crochet. <laughs> and that's the only underarm marker you need on this side. Next, we'll go back around to the little round counting marker and we'll place markers around him the exact same way we did for the sleeves. So counting him, one, two, three, place a marker in the chain space. Counting behind the marker, one, two, three, and place a marker in the chain space. And now you're officially ready to start adding the sleeves to the body of this bottom up sweater and I'll show you exactly how that's done in the next video. So thank you so much for watching and for ordering this pattern if you have already. I had so much fun making it and it really is my proudest design, so I hope you love it too. All the important links will be down below in the description box or in the comment section. See you next time. Bye!